You're listening to the Practical Tax Podcast with tax attorney Steve Moskowitz. All right, our next guest uh, is a workplace expert. Um, and we've seen this happen, especially here in the city uh, with office space. When people were allowed to work at home, uh, there was a there was a question of like, would they ever come back? And and if they're coming, if they're not coming back, that that's you know, what does that mean for commercial real estate? Real estate, excuse me. And also, if they, you know, how much how much better could a company perform if they didn't need all that office space overhead? And what kind of companies? work under that. Joining us right now is Joel Patterson. Uh, he is with TheVested.com, uh, a firm that's always on the list of best places to work. We appreciate you coming in here. Uh, Joel, um, has the <laughs> pandemic changed the workplace forever? Uh, clearly. Uh, there's no doubt about it. They, it, it forced us to uh, try some things that we had never done before, really uh, lean on the technology, see how it work. Will productivity stay up? All those things have been answered at this point. I think where we are now, especially with where the economy is, and uh, you know whether you want to go dive into the recession talk or not, but s- sliding back a little bit from where we've been over the last year and a half, uh, there is no question that that as we get into it, it it's going to come back a little bit more to where we we've, we've seen it before, where people are are typically in the office. But to say that it hasn't changed or to claim that it hasn't changed, as some people do, that's just not the case. I mean, it's uh, at least a high for those people that can, right? Manufacturing people, uh, hospitality people, they can't work from home. But the people that can, I mean, there is no doubt about it. Before we move on, though, I mean, I only got a little bit of your, your, your previous segment. And I will tell you that, that as, as somebody that um, I've never actually said this before in public, but I've, I'm somebody who since I was in high school. I was a user of cannabis and, and I'll tell you, I'm one of those people that um, I've never, I, I get the stereotype and I think the stereotype exists for a reason because there are people where what marijuana does to them, it just shuts them down. And I am one of those people where I've honestly felt like it's the one thing and a natural thing and it's not alcohol and it's other thing that allows me to just, just be kind of normal. And um, it's, it's frustrating when you, you look at all the different rules and you guys are talking about regulations on the federal level versus, and it impacts me as a business too, because what I do is we work with software packages that, that allow businesses to grow. And the company that I represent, uh, it's an Oracle product called NetSuite. They don't allow uh, us to sell to cannabis companies because it's still federally technically illegal. So it's not just a, like a, from a personal perspective, it seems like I just don't understand the arguments these days. But also as an entrepreneur, as somebody that is, is, is really interested in, in new and innovative uh, industries that might grow uh, from a, might allow us to grow from a revenue perspective. I mean, there's just so many angles to this deal that is, uh, I don't know, it's just, it's, an, it's, it's a really, especially from somebody from Texas, <laughs> I yeah. mean, you know, it'll be a long time. But anyway, I just wanted to touch on that because I was really well, enjoying right. the, the conversation. I think that's exciting to see, you know, that's one of the reasons I love doing this with Steve is that. You know, tax may sound like a taxes may sound like a dry subject, but it's anything but. It's a part yeah. of everybody's life, and it obviously influences government policy and 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 anxious, uh, excuse me, anxiety and 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 dread. And and in some cases, you know, they they believe without taxes we couldn't have done some of the incredible things we've done through DARPA and other things. But let sure. me ask you, uh, so Steve, Steve, you just um, the pandemic. You're bringing everybody back to a location in the city. People can still work from at home and some will, but um, let me ask you, when corporations are making this decision to bring people back, sometimes it's against their own financial interest uh, initially, but they believe in the long run that having people there will make the company more profitable. Is that accurate, you think? You know, there's, there's real differences depending on the management of the company. And what I've seen an awful lot of with our clients is that People are taking smaller offices and some people come in every day. Some people never come in and other people come in from time to time. And there are so many advantages of working remotely. For example, if somebody is in a very high cost area, what we've, we've seen a lot here in California 
as people moved out of California, where they were renting a small apartment that wasn't so hot. And for what they were paying in rent, they bought a nice big house in another jurisdiction that, for example, Texas doesn't have a state income tax where California has a high state income tax. Other people are more productive because the time you spend, you would have spent commuting, you can spend working. Then there's a question of some people say, well, you know what, if I don't have, to, this is my uniform, but a lot of people say, you know, if, if I don't have to dress up, I can work better. I'd rather be in a t-shirt. That's fine. As long as things are produced, this is working from home is ideal for a self-starter. We're not talking about somebody that has to be, you know, manage and saying, well, you know, put, put down your, your personal phone and, and get back to work. We're talking about, you know, people that are productive people. So what I predict in the future is most companies will have an office. It'll be a smaller office and there'll be a lot of remote working and it really works out for people. Not to mention the fact that, you know, our, our whole lifestyle, for example, going on vacation, well, do you really go on vacation or do you take your computer with you and you work at least part time? Well, that's, that's right. remote. It's so useful. And therefore, you know, really the, the, the clients and the customers benefit because people are, are more available to them. Same it, with the email. It's interesting, Steve, because you and I, um, you know, I was working in San Francisco, Joel, doing talk radio for six years in the city and then the pandemic hit. And then the next two and a half years, I did it from a room uh, from a house five, 700 miles or 500 miles away in San Diego. And the truth is, A, it sounded better. <laughs> B, I'm, I'm a people person, but in, in some businesses, I mean, mm. when you talk to people and like phone calls, a phone call could be even more intimate sometimes than a one-to-one, -one, right? Because yeah. you, you drop what the person looks like and you just, you kind of goes from the head. And I wonder, you know, this right now we're all in three, you're in Texas, right? Yep. Yeah. So we're all over the place here yet. We, we have a conversation. We're moving thoughts forward. And I'm wondering if, if, um, in some places, obviously manufacturing is going to be impossible, but in other areas, if, you know, this cat, everybody's talking about this catastrophic crash in downtown real estate. I, I think this, you're going to find companies take that real estate that, that need that, you know, like I think Steve's office probably does. You have to have people around talking, looking at numbers on, on paper. Stop me if I'm wrong, Steve, but it does benefit you in many cases to have these attorneys together, right? With ideas. So the, the, the bottom line is, I just signed a new lease in downtown San Francisco in a, in a top building. But the difference is the office that I have now is smaller than the office I had before. Because right now I'm broadcasting to you from my living room in San Francisco. I don't have to be in the office to do this. And I've also, I took a survey of clients, oh, when the pandemic began, and I was amazed how many clients preferred the remote because clients say, well, you know what? Mm -hmm. I don't have to drive into your office. I don't have to park. And then depending on the city, some people complained about, you know, having to interact with homeless, walking from a garage to a business. And they didn't like that. So what I found, the majority of clients said, wow, you know, before the pandemic, people would take time off from work. Some not even take the day off to come and visit me. And I would come in in my suit and tie and we'd sit down and shake hands. And that same person, instead of having to take a minimum half a day off to come and see me, can now work with me and we'll talk for whatever time it is, 15 minutes, half an hour, an hour, whatever. And they're in the comfort of their home or they're in their office and they didn't have to take that time off. It's more productive. And with the computers, we can see each other. We can look at documents at the same time. When we talk about looking at documents, with the computer chip, you can be in China and you're in Texas and we could all look at the same documents together, share them. So it's actually become more efficient. And what also has to happen is people had to become more tech, tech literate. You know, even myself, before the pandemic, I would meet everybody in person and my assistant would hand me a paper file. Well, now I, I look at those things in my computer and I'm doing the Zoom or I'm doing uh -huh. the phone. It's different, but it's really more efficient and most people seem to prefer it. Well, you, I'm sitting here doing this with a suit and tie on in my underwear. 
I'm just kidding, but you'll never know. Really? But I mean, the the <laughs> but the point is, is that it what matters is is um, the, the now we have the ability to fo focus exactly on what we want. And Joel, I I, I just I don't and know. Joel, let's one one more to to your point here. If we were doing everything in person, what's the likelihood that Joel would hop on an airplane and come to California right. to do this interview? Yeah. I'm going to guess probably not. So you know what? This interview is richer because we can reach out to Joel and it, it, it's reasonable. He can be in his home or his office in Texas, spend 15 or 20 minutes with us, and it's 15 or 20 minutes. You're not going to hop on a plane to do this. I don't so know if I can. Really I, I mean, I, I mean, I'd agree with that. I, I honestly, um, it depends on the reason. Uh, personally, I, uh, even though we've, I, I'm perfectly adaptable to what we're doing these days and have no problem with it, but I am always going to defer to being in person. So if I have an opportunity to do this interview in person, even if it's minimal or marginal, kind of what I think will be the benefit, I'd probably do it. Now, I agree with you that most people aren't like me, right? I mean, most people aren't necessarily going to do that. But that piece of it, it's not just the 15 minutes of the interview or the 20 minutes of the interview. It's what the 15 or 20 minutes before and the 15 or 20 minutes after. That's where the magic happens in my mind. So when I'm, when I'm, when I'm like kind of dealing with, we're, we, we have 70 employees, and we were built from day one to all be in the same space. Our office was designed for that. We are a technology consulting firm. We work, our people work on lots of different projects. So collaboration is important. And we built for that. And yet, as the pandemic hit, we had to shift, right? And, and, and now we're moving away from it. But we are also still recognizing that there is no, to me, uh, there is no better way for us to be effective as a group, uh, uh, ways to mentor uh, ways to learn from the experiences that we have, whether it's a project or just being with somebody, the things that we, we run into just a, casually or walk into the restroom or from the parking lot doesn't really matter. Those are the things that are missing. And I think that as we've gotten further down this path, where I'm really seeing that is with our newer hires and people that have not been in our industry for any real length of time. So the last couple of years, you know, they don't really know how to learn from other people. Um, we're just, we haven't figured out a way to replace that. Not that we won't, but for now, I still feel like um, we need, you know, 20 to at least 40% of our people's kind of just in-person time in order to oh, really exactly. make Exactly, just like what I'm doing in my office, where basically some people are coming in part-time. Because I remember, and you talk about traveling, at one point in our practice, I was taking a hundred airplane flights a year. Oh yeah, platinum and... plus pro right here too. Yeah, <laughs> it's nice when you've got it, but you don't want to earn it. <laughs> well, I've been doing stand-up comedy since 1980, and I'm telling you, you can't do that on a Zoom, right? Um, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, and but you're right. I mean, it's it, it, there's something. Uh, we're going to find a balance here, I think. With well, you know what the balance is, Chip? When, when, when you, you know somebody personally, it's like right. next week, Chip and I are, are getting together live and in person. So I, I think the, the balance is where you spend some time live in, in person. I know exactly what you mean, the feel from the person. Yeah. yeah. But because you don't have to do it every time, once you've had that feel, you can carry that on and you still maintain it seeing each other part time but far more efficiently when you're doing something say for example if i was in texas or you were here in california even though we got together we wouldn't get together every time but we know each other as a deeper sure. level that's that's why the part time is working out perfectly absolutely last thing here joel and we really appreciate your time i, I read a, a survey that found uh, from the bureau of labor statistics it found that 60 percent of businesses rarely or never allow workers to telecommute that was 2018 I got to think that number is going to change significantly and we'll keep an eye on that as we move forward. And we'd love to have you back and, and talk about this again. You don't have to fly in either. We'll just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm happy to do but you're that. welcome to. Yeah. I'll leave you <laughs> yeah, come to the city. Yeah. Yeah. Based on what you just said, Chip is the, the last one that I, that I read uh, maybe a week ago was that about 35% of those people from 2018 that were full-time in the office are back in the office full-time. Now my company where I just said, we're really, we only mandate our monthly all hands meeting. So it's, you know, but there's people in our office every day, right? So yeah. you got to create other reasons to be there, create some FOMO, 
create some team meetings, all that stuff will make a difference. And it'll give you a reason to develop those relationships that really, at the end of the day, creates the culture that, that, that binds these people together. And then you think about the labor market and everything else we are in right now. That's what you need in order to be successful. So I like your uh, approach, man. Your company's it. lucky to have you there, Joel. Thank you so Thanks, much. Jeff. Appreciate right. it. You guys well, take care. All right. Thank you. All right. That's, uh, that is another edition of uh, the Practical Tax Show with tax attorney Steve Moskowitz. Uh, that was interesting stuff, Steve. I'm, you know, it's fun. I can't wait to, to get together next week and talk more in person. Okay. I'm looking forward to it live in person. All right. Again, uh, tax attorney Steve Moskowitz. I'm Chip Franklin. This is Practical Tax. You're listening to the Practical Tax Podcast with tax attorney Steve Moskowitz.